My next guest is Dr. Elizabeth Bright. She is the author of Good Fat is Good for Women Menopause. That book is actually good for all women, not just women in menopause. She's got a new book that's coming out that's specifically addressing adolescent girls and their health. So that'll be really exciting. And then another book, a big book on thyroid health that's going to be coming out. And Dr. Bright is an expert in the thyroid, thyroid health, and she is phenomenal. So she is a trained osteopath and naturopath, and she lives in Italy. Um, She's American, but lives in Italy and she does consults. So I had done a consult with her a couple of years ago when I first moved to Florida and needed, I was having issues finding a doctor here that could really help me with my thyroid. And she was phenomenal. So she's really, really helpful to do a consult. If anybody wants to do that, I'll put her information in the show notes so you can get in touch with her. But I found her book. I bought her book before I did the consult, that good fat is good for women at menopause. Even though I actually am not in menopause quite yet, I figured at the time I was 50, I'm 52. And that book was just very helpful. She explains everything about why we're in the place that we're in, in terms of women's health, but also what to do about not feeling great. So I loved this talk. We actually talked a little bit about the new book with adolescents. We talk a lot about women and women's health and thyroid health. So I hope that you find this episode helpful and you'll send it to somebody that you might know that it might help them because it's not information that you can come across easily. It's not that hard to come across it, but we typically don't get this kind of information. So I hope that you will pass the information along to those who might be in need of hearing how to heal their thyroid. Maybe you know some people that are in menopause that this would be helpful for them, but it's not. She also talks a little bit about men too. So we're not leaving the men completely out of this one. All right. Thanks for being here. Oh, Dr. Bright, I am so excited to have you on the show. You have been so inspirational and helpful to me in my thyroid health journey. And then now that I'm headed towards menopause, head first towards menopause, I, um, I'm i just grateful for the work that you do and the fact that you put it out in the public because it's hard to find good information. So Yes, very, it's getting harder and harder. There were sort of waves of in the 80s, they were against hormones, replacement therapy. There was a lot of, I guess, in the second wave of feminism and now it's getting very difficult again there's a lot a lot of uh push to get women on hrt Uh uh-huh nine-year-olds i know i know yeah and i um i just think that it's that it's important for people who have the expertise that you do to keep putting the information out there your book was really helpful to me so i got your book first the good fat is good for women in menopause book Mm -hmm. and then i was having a really hard time finding a decent doctor when i moved to florida Mm -hmm. and so i want people to know that you do consults so yes, yes you're in italy Yes. But you do consults and you were so helpful to me because my thyroid, I thought I was doing all the right things. I thought I was, I was on a carnivore diet, which first of all, to have a doc that you can talk to without having to hide the fact that you're on a carnivore diet was really refreshing. Yeah. Yeah. Because I typically just hide that, but it was really, so the book was helpful, but the consultation really helped me. You helped me realize that even though I thought I was eating enough fat, I wasn't, Mm -hmm. and that my thyroid really needed a lot more support. So I just wanted to say thank you and let people know they can reach out. I'm glad it worked out well. Yeah, well, and even though I have a good doc here that thinks outside the box, I still, to have you as a resource and to be able to come back to you for consults, I think is huge Mm -hmm. for people. Great. Thank you. Because I'm telling you, the information is just the way we test for thyroid. Let's just start with thyroid. I'm writing a book on that, but first I'm going to write this adolescent book and then I'm going to write this big book and they can cart me off and do whatever they want to me, but I want all this knowledge out there. 
Yes. Yeah, so the, the book after, well, the adolescent book is going to be great because our adolescents need so much help. Yeah. And I think that book is going to be really great. And then what's the big book? Is it going to be on thyroid? Yes, it is. Yes, okay. it is. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, talk to me about all the things that people don't realize are related to their thyroid that are related to their thyroid. Oh boy. Well, the thyroid is important for every single cell in the body it actually drives puberty so they're always focused on you know estrogen and all this kind of stuff but it's actually the thyroid is the uh grand conductor of the hormonal orchestra so and the thyroid is the first when the uh before the neural tube is even formed in the fetus is the first thing to develop mm -hmm. so hugely important obviously the baby the fetus grows from the thought from t3 because t3 is also a growth hormone Mm -hmm. Sexual characteristics are formed by thyroid. Uh, girls, well, boys and girls, but girls more because they have more sexual characteristics to form, need 40% more iodine and 40% more thyroid hormone during adolescence. Same, same goes with pregnancy. So lots of people go hypo during pregnancy. During pregnancy. The way they're testing currently, even that's this even happened to my daughter, people are not getting diagnosed because they just don't want to diagnose hypothyroidism because they don't want to give it the degree of importance that it has because they, I mean, depression, psychoses, uh, hypertension, uh, all these things that would we know are related to thyroid function mm -hmm. or, well, I know related to thyroid function and doctors previous to the 70s also knew related to thyroid function are related to thyroid function. So you wouldn't be needing to sell all these drugs if you treated thyroid function. Right. And for me, a lot of people that come to me with anxiety, because I help people that are chronically yeah. anxious and they say, oh no, I've had my thyroid test. And I'm like, mm, you probably, let, let me see. Cause it's always, uh, they don't run, their docs don't run a full panel. And even if they do, that's the minimally, range. yeah, too they're wide. too wide. Yeah. And yeah. for me, my thought, I didn't really start feeling great until my TSH tanked. Right. Well, it doesn't tank. It doesn't tank. It's just low. It's just, <laughs> it's just it's low. And anyway, only two tissues actually talk to TSH, talk with TSH, mm -hmm. uh, liver and uh, kidney tissue. So think about it. the brain does not communicate with TSH. Hmm. I did not know that. So there are a lot of tissues. Yes. There are very few tissues in the body that use TSH to communicate. Hence, mm -hmm. the focus on TSH really only started in, in 74 because they saw that when Utinger isolated TSH, they saw that it made Synthroid, with Synthroid, TSH would go up and down because they wanted to sell Synthroid. So they were trying to move away from natural desiccated thyroid, and that mm -hmm. worked. So that's why they don't test. Often people get tested just for TSH and free T4. T4. Mm -hmm. They do the whole T4 and the whole uh, T3, which is irrelevant because they're bound to proteins. So they're not, you're not testing the reserve. I mean, my daughter in the UK got tested just for TSH and we paid for extra testing mm -hmm. and she went hypo during her pregnancy. Mm -hmm. So we had to address it. Right. And most people don't get it addressed. And then you have babies. Who are autistic. Ah, who have learning disabilities, who are predisposed toward hypothyroidism during adolescence when this mm -hmm. shit basically hits the fan because you need 40% more thyroid hormone and 40% more iodine during adolescence and a lot of people aren't getting it. Yeah. Well, and a lot of people aren't getting the right fat to also be able to make all of their hormones. No, they're not. They're they're well, unless they're us and they're eating our high fat carnivore diets. Mm -hmm. And girls, adolescent girls, certainly are avoiding fat like the plague because they've been told, well, they have this body image that they have in their mind, and they are told that they will that fat is fattening, and so they avoid it. Yeah, and let's set the record straight that fat is not what's making us fat. That is not that we actually need, and you need a lot more fat in adolescence right but what about menopause as well because you have moved from basically ovarian steroid hormones are only necessary for making babies mm -hmm. so all the times in your life that you're not making babies which hopefully are 
many because we're only really supposed to have like three kids. Hunter gatherers only had about three kids and they got their periods at six at 18. And in the 1800s, we got the women got their periods at 16. That was a median age. And now the median age is down to 12 and now pushing nine. Um, So that's the high carbohydrate diet for you. But so, so absolutely adolescents need more, the more fat because they're building these sexual characteristics and they need in order to produce the steroid hormones, which are not just estrogen and progesterone. They're also cortisol go up, cortisol goes up. So every single hormone, steroid hormone is part of the steroid hormone cascade is made out of animal fat, is made out of cholesterol. LDL, actually, it's made out of LDL. Mm-hmm. Right. So that's the other thing that we test for here in the United States and everybody is- Everywhere. And they so- want to look- Lower it, lower it, oh, it's lower so- it gets in, getting lower what to 180 now, the total cholesterol when 10 years ago it was 300. I, that just drives me. Only vegans me. can have low, low LDL and low, low cholesterol. Yeah, it drives me nuts that my every doctor I've seen tells me, you know, oh, you should lower your cholesterol. It's at 230. Yeah. Yeah, my I don't total- want a woman between 220, uh, under under 220. Yeah. No. Right. No. No. Cause you can't address stress because your stress system is also part of, you know, your stress response mm-hmm. is made out of cholesterol. Mm-hmm. So when you do have stress, how are you going to, your stress reserve is created from cholesterol. So if you have a lot of stress, you need more cholesterol. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then what's happening in menopause that Well, in menopause, we basically, the little bit that we, uh, of the steroid hormone that are, that is produced in the ovaries, it's always been made in the adrenal glands. So the adrenal glands, if you've been fasting and dieting since you were 15, by the time you hit menopause, it's really only a 15% change of steroid hormone production when you go from not being menopausal because perimenopause doesn't exist to menopausal so but if you have already drug your adrenals through the mud by avoiding fat and avoiding you know and fasting then you will get hit with adrenal issues when you go into menopause it's really an accumulation of years and years of of un unknowing adrenal abuse that's what menopausal symptoms are they are adrenal symptoms they are not menopausal symptoms Okay. That's so important. So every, every friend I have is, you know, saying all the, the night sweats and the, all of the not being able to sleep and, um, yeah, all of the things. And the only time I experienced some hot flashes that came back or when I, when carbohydrates, if I have carbohydrates, I get hot flashes and I'm, and I'm talking about like, seasonal occasional seasonal fruits and vegetables i'm not talking about you know and it's it is interesting that well, the stimulants they're yeah stimulants. any sugar is a stimulant so it's mm-hmm. a stimulant with cocaine heroin cannabis nicotine alcohol it's all it's a stimulant mm-hmm. right right so, so it's sensitive that their stress system is not handling it and carbohydrates will just make their cortisol levels go up. So a lot of people, you know, come say that they're on a carnivore diet and they feel more tired if they don't eat carbohydrates is because they're not eating carb. They're not, I've taken the stimulant away, just like I make them stop smoking too. So then we reveal what is actually under the surface. Why does a person need a stimulant? Why do they mm-hmm. need, do they feel tired? You, you know, we're supposed to wake up right eyed and bushy tailed in the morning from healthy thyroid and Mm-hmm. adrenal function we, we didn't evolve to eat all this kind of you know amount of carbohydrates we were evolved to eat a tiny amount when we ran out of meat so it's right. just it's just eons of i mean women's hips have changed that's what i describe in my book i mean we know that that with the egyptians they, we, there was osteoporosis and tooth decay and and having babies is a lot more difficult now because mm-hmm. of the since we invented agriculture and of course our periods are more precocious puberty is just right getting worse every year yeah 
And so many people are having get, getting diagnosed with all kinds of things, PCOS and all kinds of things. Yeah, absolutely. And those are all related to iodine and thyroid function. Which is just incredible to me that that's not the focus that we're not help. I mean, it, it's your focus. It's, you know, it's some people's focus, but it's not mainstream focus. Like we're just not no. told that this is what's important. And I think one the other thing that was really helpful for me is there's a whole camp of no iodine for the Hashimoto's people. And you really helped me get, get clear on the importance of mm-hmm. iodine, even though I eat fish all the time because I live not enough in it. Not there's enough is interfering with the absorption. Maybe f- you know, two hundred years ago or a hundred yeah. years ago that would have been. But back in, I mean, the cretinism, cretinism when people were extremely hypothyroid and goiter were prevalent in mountainous areas. Yes. Goiter belts, Switzerland, Michigan, Minnesota, Tennessee, where my family's from, but I wasn't born mm-hmm. there. Mm-hmm. Um, all my rel- all my female relatives in Tennessee had thyroid issues. Yeah. So, but then iodine, they started putting salt in iodine, which didn't help. It just stopped. It just reduced goiter. But they didn't. I mean, they knew since the 30s that breast tissue and prostate mm-hmm. tissue and adrenal tissue and skeletal tissue, every single tissue needs iodine. So when they reduced the RDA to such tiny amounts, that was really just to address goiter. Marine did studies with adolescent girls in the 20s and 30s in Minnesota and prevented them from getting goiter with 90 milligrams of iodine. So, and girls were the ones who got goiter, not boys, because women need more thyroid hormone and iodine during adolescence. That's unbelievable to me because it's so easy to fix. You know, I mean, I just take iodine supplement now all the time because- Well, if you have an inflamed thyroid, yeah. It will wake it up. So there are ways to deal with that. I mean, people are just toxic today with halides and not just halides. Today it's phthalates and PFAs and yeah. all of those substances interfere with the absorption of iodine. All kinds of medications interfere with the absorption of iodine. Hypertension medications, lower thyroid function. Tea, tea, black tea, green tea mm-hmm. is full of fluoride. All those people drinking tea are preventing the absorption of iodine, which not only leads to low thyroid function, but also breast cancer. Right. And uterine and ovarian and prostate. <laughs> uh, the list goes on and on. Yeah. Yeah. So with our teenagers and your new book that's going to come out on adolescence, do you want to give us any hints? Well, I'm basically going to describe adolescence and say what it is because too much focus from the medical community is again all medicine has evolved from the male gaze so women are always have always historically been seen as a lesser version of the male so our a man was never sent to the loony bin if he was crazy a woman was had a hysterectomy and sent to the loony bin so our our mental capacity and our health has always been associated with our reproductive organs never with men So the same thing is happening over and over again. If you give a nine-year-old HRT birth control because she's got ADHD, which is a hypothyroid symptom, but you're giving a boy amphetamines. Mm -hmm. So you're already messing her up because there are people still getting cancer from HRT. So Mm -hmm. It's the the book will explain why women, girls do not, how the hormones work. Mm -hmm. And then I will address all of the symptoms that I made. I posted and asked people to write me all the things that they're worried about and what adolescent, what girls are worried about symptoms and PCOS, which was is much more frequent now than it was 20 years ago. Endometriosis is much more frequent now than it was 20 years ago. So, and I will go through how each one, what could have caused it. And it'll be diet, iodine and thyroid. Mm -hmm. And do you recommend that we're all supplementing with iodine? Everybody. Today, it's just too, I mean, beaches and Maldives are covered in plastic bottles, uh, the ones you don't see. So, Mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, uh, in in Italy, they always go to the beach all summer. And even 
people without who aren't wealthy and they say, oh, I'm getting my iodine. No, you're not because you're drinking tap water and you're drinking out of plastic bottles. And mm -hmm. so it doesn't take much to, so actually in the eighties, the minimum, they figured out the minimum that you needed to make yourself saturated was two drops of 5% Lugols. Right. It's not even enough anymore because there's just too much crap out there. Iodine is a heavy metal chelator. It's an antiviral, antibacterial. It is a detox mechanism in and of itself. So, mm -hmm. and if, if people are, cause it will wake up your thyroid. If uh, you have an inflamed thyroid, but then you have to address having an inflamed thyroid. Right. Yeah. And for people to do that, they may just have to consult with you. Cause I don't know a lot of doctors that, I mean, you have to be really vigilant as a person that, I mean, I go in and tell the, my doctor what I want. I look, I get, I order my own labs. I look at mm -hmm. my own labs. Mm -hmm. I monitor everything myself and mm -hmm. then take it in. And, and I mean, I let her think she's giving me her opinion, but I'm basically saying, this is what I want. Right. Well, I did two videos on the iodine. So I, one of the, you yeah. know, the first one I actually addressed uh, why people say it can make you hyperthyroid. And it, it, it's, that's because you're waking up the thyroid and your thyroid's inflamed. And I go into all of that in great detail. Okay. Uh, so people uh, will link that so people can find yeah. all of that. Yeah. And recently you posted about the whales. So the menopausal mama whales. And yeah. I thought, oh my gosh, I've found my new role in life. I'm headed mm -hmm. straight towards being a menopausal whale mama. Yeah, fighting for those kids, fighting for those grandkids, teaching yeah. those grandkids where the hunting grounds are. Amazing. And I did not realize that whales, I didn't realize that, you know, not all mammals have menopause. Oh, no, menopause is, we are special and so are the whales because they're very large mammals with mm -hmm. big brains. So yeah, it's, it's a, a menopause is an ev evolutionary benefit. We don't die at 50. Chimps do. Apes do. Mm -hmm. This is exciting. At 52, I'm like, all right, I've got, I'm going to teach these young and be protective yeah. of our young and teach our, mm -hmm. our young's young. I, oh, I don't know what I'll teach them, but still we're going to have a role to play. Absolutely. I, a somebody, very important role. Yeah. Cause so many Wisdom. people, I think in menopause, you get to reinvent yourself. It's mm -hmm. a new time in life. You're supposed to, cause you're not having babies anymore. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, you got a grandbaby now, which is really I exciting. Do, I do. I and mean, we were just videoing with the, he's going through a not sleeping spell. He's seven mm -hmm. months old. Mm -hmm. He's not sleeping very much, but yes, very cute. Yeah. Yeah. So what do we want to tell all of the menopausal people listening? Read my we, book, number one. Read the uh, book. Yeah. I address all the symptoms associated with menopause, that it's a good thing. And if it is, you menopausal symptoms are, are related to adrenal issues and thyroid issues. Mm -hmm. Time and time again, our brain is not supposed to decay. Our brains, our bones are not supposed to, no, all, none of that is true. I explain how they came up with all those things and have put the fear in us about our bodies, which makes me mad. They don't, don't do this to men. Well, more and more men are getting testosterone pellets, but I think it's very funny because associating libido and uh, energy with male, a male, see, theoretically a male supposed hormone, right? Mm -hmm. we, women have testosterone too. It's, that's the problem. They just sort of, you know, women estrogen and men testosterone and, and all they sort of have since they isolated these hormones they've been selling them and they just basically come up with symptoms as they go along right I know it's really frustrating but it's also it's kind of an exciting time because I think so many people are waking up and going wait what have we what 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 bag of lives have we been told lately and yeah, I and I so. think I think a lot of people are tired of feeling not good well I think what what, what drives me a little nuts is here there are so many carnivore women who are questioning the cholesterol hypothesis, right? They're eating fat. But then if their naturopath or their functional doctor says you need HRT, they don't question that. So the whole 
anything we're told has to be questioned. So there are a lot of carnivore women. Mm -hmm. A lot of them are not questioning. They're questioning the cholesterol hypothesis, but they're not questioning the hormone Hormone replacement. replacement. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, because it's sort of pushed on you a a little bit. Well, so are the statins. There are a lot of women saying, I'm not going to take a statin. You're right. I'm eating meat and I'm eating fat and I feel good. But if they don't feel 100%, they're going to believe about the uh, HRT, which raise cortisol levels, which will make you feel, which makes some women feel better for a while just because they're raising cortisol levels. What does that mean? It means their cortisol is low. So they need stimulus. (laughs) Right. Exactly. Yeah. Well, there are a lot of people still that aren't that don't realize how important, how helpful it can be to be on a carnivore diet. There are people that oh, are absolutely afraid. Of, Everybody except me in Italy and a few other people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because then, I mean, how is it in Italy? Well, we just get our meat. We get cases of Irish ribeye, and everybody thinks we're nuts. Okay, <laughs> we don't care. You know, they're all dropping like flies. We had a, a little, uh, had some people over and we had pork rinds and my husband ate guacamole and and they had to deal with it. I mean, you know. Yeah. Yeah, that's funny that that's the, but for people who are still thinking that they need to have a balanced diet with more, I mean, you were also a chef at one point, so you made a big shift in your life. Yes, uh, yes. Well, right? yeah, <laughs> several shifts, but well, the balance that that's what the Italian doctors are always saying, the balanced diet. That's what they're always saying, balanced diet. And that just comes from uh, the hooey that uh, the hooey. that is sent by, that is pushed out by, we know, uh, you know, companies that make a lot of money. You don't mean it takes, I mean, all of where I live in Puglia, it's all, all there are no animals. And my husband is constantly, we go to Scotland and we see all these sheep grazing and it's so nice and animals eating grass and in Italy they cut every single tree down and put up olive oil which the Greeks never consumed they used it as to you know fill lanterns and scrape off their sweat when they were in the gymnasium nobody ate olive oil nobody used it Mm -hmm. it's all I mean it's cheaper to raise olive trees which are hundreds of years old and all you do is shake them with a machine and take it off and you press it then to actually animal husbandry is is much much more complicated than olive tree husbandry Mm -hmm. and it costs more probably but you know that you get a bigger bang for your buck if -hmm. you're selling olive oil than you're raising animals it's very unfortunate yeah and do you get a lot of people from the united states that have have been told to do the plant based and oh of course people who are former vegan but most more and more well, people know me now so they know I'm going to put them on make them eat meat so they've <laughs> been vegan in the past and they felt horrible and some people are ketovore that's popular now mm-hmm. but there are all kinds of supplements that people are taking that are plants I mean look Valium used to be valerian root right plants are medicinal when I lived in China you go to the pharmacy and you get a pill the size of my fist with resin and plants and all this kind of stuff. But again, medicine is medicine. Chinese medicine is just as allopathic as Western medicine. Mm-hmm. My job as an osteopath and a naturopath is to remove obstacles to your body's natural ability to heal. And when you do that, you do that by removing plants because mm-hmm. they are medicinal. Right. I know. Yeah. I love when my doctor says, well, just try to eat a balanced diet. I'm like, uh uh-huh, Kelly, thanks. And I just move out, like knowing what I'm going to do. Um, mm-hmm. But you actually had me, I did beef, water, and salt and butter for a little bit with, mm-hmm. to, to really get some deeper healing for. Well, it's anti-inflammatory. Yeah. Because was- many people are, for instance, if they have thyroid issues, they'll be more sensitive. Mm-hmm. Uh, their immune system is in overdrive. So their food sensitivities will be very high and we have to figure out which ones those are. All those allergy testing, all the allergy testing that people are doing Mm -hmm. isn't, isn't the, the results are not true because you've not stopped consuming that food. You have to stop consuming that food for a certain time for your immune system to recover, to be able to tell you that food doesn't work for you. Yeah. 
Yeah, I've I've looked at a lot of the science. There, the science just isn't there for the food testing. Yeah. So that was really helpful for me. And the more I would, the more I've healed. Now, if I have something, I have a plant. It's not a big deal. Yeah, which right. is your sense of your immune system doesn't overreact. Yeah. yeah, it's yeah, yeah. Of course, I just stick with my ribeyes and my. I'm still beef and butter. Is that's my favorite? Yeah, me too. I mean, my husband eats some pork and some chicken. It just doesn't make me feel. Just don't feel satisfied. So maybe it's the iron content. But I'm. I mean, I will have. If somebody's having a birthday, maybe, I mean, it's not like I can't eat something else. I just choose, I just feel better this way. So I can go paddle boarding for an hour before I work six hours. Right. Exactly. Exactly. I think being out in nature has also been the big healer for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. You know? That water, the be on the water is such therapy for me. Yeah. Well, and the, the light using light as a nutrient was, I just didn't really, I mean, I, knew the sun was important, but not, I didn't pay attention to how important it was mm -hmm. or it is mm -hmm. for us. Yeah, so that's definitely. been really healing. When you mentioned libido, I get a lot of questions from women in their fifties about libido. Like that seems to be a really big problem for people. Yeah. So it's vaginal dryness and I fix it all the time. Mm -hmm. But you know, the thing is, is that, and I'm getting more and more male clients. Yeah. Yeah. Younger, younger and younger. Yeah. Uh, if your hormone again steroid hormone cascade if you are always in the stress response so the steroid hormone cascade you have uh left progesterone you know progesterone aldosterone cortisol all that and then you on the right you have dhea and you have at the end at the end of the line you have testosterone and then the estrogens so if you're always in stress mode or unable to handle stress because you've been in stress mode in the past, you will not be properly making the sizing estrogen hormones and the sex steroids, the others. So mm -hmm. any kind of cortisol issue will interfere with libido and secretion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And from what my work, I help people with safety signals to their nervous system, rewiring the nervous system. Mm -hmm. but they still have to address these components, the medical, I mean, the, the more physical pieces of that. Well, what you're doing is important because you're moving people from a sympathetic state to a parasympathetic state. And that yes. helps a lot. That help really helps. We know, and that's why I use fat because we know cortisol lowers. I mean, we know fat lowers cortisol, but it also moves you eating fat, moves you from a sympathetic state to a parasympathetic state. Mm -hmm. So some people do need lifestyle changes that you're offering because it's really important because you can't just do it. If you're constantly, if you're on your phone and triggering dopamine response and things like that, and not making these lifestyle changes that are really important for you to move from sympathetic to parasympathetic, then you're not going to sleep or you're not going to be able to be aroused because you're in a stress state. Right. Right. Yeah. So the fat piece is really important being in the parasympathetic, not constantly being in that fight flight flop. That's, that just is wrecking people. Yes. I'm just wondering what, are, what are the other being out in nature, living a life that eat the meat people eat lots of meat and good fat, but the fat is also full of electrons. So I'm always telling people yeah. that that's easy for our body to use mm -hmm. and because people think they need to get, they need to eat the plants for the electrons to help with their mitochondrial health and i'm like you really you're much better off eating a higher fat mm -hmm. lower carbohydrate definitely if, if any carbohydrates at all mm -hmm. really yeah is there yeah, any them. they're just entertainment i know i use them as entertainment and as just variety and entertainment every now and then and yeah. um, and if you feel okay i think that's okay i don't you know yeah. but if you don't I just, not if you're having a panic attack, it's not okay. Once you're not having panic attacks anymore, yeah, it's sure. okay. <laughs> sure, yeah, I know, but it's it's hard for people to make that change. What else? What have we for, have we forgotten anything? What what else do you feel like is really up, and that you're seeing a lot of that might be helpful for people to hear? No, I'm seeing more and more push from doctors to prescribe uh, hormone replacement therapy. I've definitely seen that in the past couple of years. Yep. I think society is, we are geared towards not convalescing or society pushes us to not convalesce. I think people need to trust their bodies again, especially yep. women who yep. are 
it's impossible for women to trust their bodies and more and more males because of social media. That's very difficult for adolescents, especially girls, because there's a, they're just supposed to, I mean, our society, our society is still, you exist to get married and have babies still, unfortunately. And in the U S returning to that. So, um, and no, that's not what we're for. For a period of time, yes, but not, you know, so it's quite, uh, that's why there's so much emphasis on the female body and how it should be a certain way. I mean, women, women want to be dainty. They want to be delicate. How they don't, so mediating associated with masculinity. So mm. it's harder for them to, that's why I put that picture of me eating a big lamb bone because it's just, women are supposed to be strong. When I was a kid, I wanted to be a hero. I wanted to be uh, you know, have a sword and save people. And so, you know, that's, that's how I see women. And, you know, they find these Viking women in their graves with these huge swords and beautiful amulets. And that's, that's, that's what women are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think, you know, I don't know how you feel about this, but I feel like our men, I have a house full of boys. So, well, they're not, they're grown now, but still, I have all these boys and I, I really feel for them because I want them to find their place because yeah. as we find, we, I've, I then think it's difficult for us to find our place when the men are also not able to find their place and we mm -hmm. need them to, to find their place so that we can do our wild. I mean, women, we've always been into exploring the wildness of the territory. Like that's what we do, but not if we're not safe. Mm -hmm. Like we don't, but yeah, I, I, yeah. I don't know what we're going to do about all of these problems that we have, except just keep trying. Well, I think that a lot of them are reduced because if you can, I mean, health is how you address stress, not the absence of stress. So if everyone were eating a carnivore and the women were eating a high fat carnivore, because men do need less fat, then I think there'd be a lot. I mean, we know that a cholesterol lowers aggression. Lowers cholesterol lowers cholesterol lowers depression cholesterol exactly. lowers exactly so if none of these people if these people were eating this way if we can raise our children to eat this way there'll be less of that and then there will be less danger right and then everybody can take their place right and i'm gonna be the mama menopausal whale that comes along and is helping hopefully grandchildren at some point and that, mm -hmm. that feels like such an exciting way to live a life. Yeah. That's to a have very full life. A full life and a different phases of the life that are, I don't want to say productive because that sounds very American, but you know, more of a fulfilling. Yeah, fulfilling. We have a role to play and it feels good to mm -hmm. be able to, to fulfill that role. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. yeah. Well, I have absolutely loved talking to you, Dr. Bright. I always do. I appreciate your time. Is there anything Dr. else Kelly? that you wanted to share that we didn't get to? No, no. <laughs> Just uh, basically the good fat is good for women. Menopause is for all women. And I will be addressing the younger female women in the next one and working very hard to communicate everything I know in the thyroid book eventually. Yeah. Yes. And we'll link how people can get in touch with you with your website so they can get consults if they need to do that. Mm -hmm. And then Instagram is a good place to follow you too. Yes. 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 I'm because not much of an influencer, but I do put things when I'm really mad, I read an article and I'm like, and I put it up. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. So I think that's a good place where people can, can stay in touch too. Yeah. yeah. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. It's great to see you. You too.